Hi everybody, Paul Gallagher. Um, what I want to show you today is a nice little bit of functionality in Adobe Camera Raw. And the same goes for Lightroom as well, whereby we can use a grad filter, but not as we'd ordinarily want to use a grad filter. I'll show you what I mean. If we go Command Minus, we want a little bit of white space around the image, and we're going to go to our grad filter, which is positioned just up here, and click on it. Okay, so we've got all the sliders that we can use when we apply a grad filter to an image. But what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to come to the top of the image there, way off the edge of the image, into the white. I just click. Okay. Now, I've created a grad filter, but it's off the edge of the image. So the red is where it begins, and the green is the midway point, and it would probably finish here. So you'd expect that there's no grad effect going to happen with that particular image. But it does. It carries right the way down here. And we can see that if we come across to our mask options here, click on that, we can see that the entire image is uniformly covered by the grad filter's mask, but there's no grad in there, it's all constant. So what am I doing this for if I'm not using a grad? Well, I'm gonna uncheck mask options there. Because what this, when we can get a mask over this entire image, it gives us some really useful functionality, namely range masks here. So if I click on that, it gives us two options. It gives us color and luminance. And what I want to go over is both of them and how I used it in this particular image. The image incidentally was taken in Lofoten in the depths of the winter. And what I want to do with the image is kind of work on the blue in the sky and bring that particular color out, make it more strong, more bold. And also, uh, try and bring out a bit more life in the size of the mountains here. But I'm not going to be doing that with colour. I'll be doing that with luminance. But when we select colour here, what happens is this colour picker tool, the black box, becomes active. And so as we come over to the image, we can see the colour picker tool. Now I'm going to click on that because it's the blue in the sky. I want to accentuate and make darker. And then I've got all these sliders at my disposal. I can just jump in and use them. So for me, I'm going to kind of saturate the color a little bit more, make it a bit stronger, and also maybe bring the exposure down a little bit. So we've got more of what it was like when I was stood there. Okay, and if we switch this on and off, we can see that change taking place, which is great. It saves me trying to make awkward selections potentially around the tops of the mountains. But the other challenge I've got now is, how do we work on the side of the mountains? Well, yeah, we could get an adjustment brush from up here and start brushing it in. But really, it's going to be a tricky affair trying to just get the size of these mountains looking a little bit more like robust and, and craggy. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to get a new graduated filter and do exactly the same thing. I'm going to click up there. And there it appears. Okay. Well, one, the reason why it's gone blue is that I didn't reset the selective edits. If I do that now... That goes back. That's just the adjustments that we made with the first uh, graduated filter. So we're all back to normal, but just our adjusted sky. I'm going to come down once again to range mask here. I'm going to click on luminance. Now you'll see when I do that, this dialog box at the bottom appears. And it's got luminance range. And you can clearly see here in the left hand side that's relating to luminance, really dark shadows and dark parts of the image. And as you come round to the right hand side, this is the paler part of the image. And the reason why I'm using this is because it's the shadow darker side of the mountains of the bit that I want to adjust. We've also got smoothness here, which I'll explain in a minute. But to see what it looks like on the image, if we click on visualize luminance map here, <clears throat> We can see the mask over the entire image once again by placing our graduated filter up there. It's completely covered in the image. Now we need to select our luminance range by adjusting the sliders at either edge of the luminance range slider. Now for me, I don't want the sky to be involved, so I'm going to dial this across and keep dialing it across. And the more I do that, we can see that we're cutting out the brighter part of the image and focusing on the mountains, which is the very part I want to adjust. Okay. And now what smoothness does is, if you move it more to the left, it kind of bleeds, it, it smudges the edge of the selection that you're making via the luminance range sliders. But if you move it to the right, it makes it slightly more selective. So I'm going to go with about, about 55, and that'll just get me the areas of the mountains adjusted to just what I want to do with them. Okay. When you've done that, you've got your area selected, you're ready to work. Uncheck visualize luminance map.
and now just go for the sliders that you want to use so for me it would probably be a bit of clarity that will help us out also the blacks need to be a bit more dominant in the mountain so i'll slide them to the left and i'll show the blacks off there and maybe just get some of the whites to get that kind of haze in the image as well fine so just using luminance and color range mask we've gone from an image that was like that to this it's got far more prominence just using luminance and range now the other thing this can be used again if we if you want to do a localized part of an area specifically focus on a localized part of an area if we click on adjustment brush at the top there and we click on mask options here exactly the same functionality applies you know, you'll see that range mask is grayed out because you've not applied any of the masks to the image reset all these make sure you click on selective edits and then what we can do now is we can brush the image in brush a mask all over the image in much the same way and we could do exactly the same thing with an adjustment brush if we come down here now we can see that range mask is available and the same function, functionality behind there, which is color and luminance, is available also in your adjustment brush. So really handy trick. Range masking, it can be very helpful with certain images where selections may be very difficult, but certainly worth a try. Thanks very much for listening.